Welcome to Forbes Talks. Joining me now is Danny DePlacido, senior contributor here at Forbes. Let's talk about the bombshells that came out of the Harry and Meghan documentary series. What were some of the biggest revelations? The series, well, it was kind of light on revelations, wasn't it? The big one was really, it delved into more detail the extent that the relationship between the palace and the British tabloids and how the palace insiders kind of perceived Harry and Meghan to be something of a threat to William and Kate. Why were they as a well threat? As, why were they perceived as a threat? Mm -hmm. I think they were seen as taking the spotlight away, like kind of messing with the natural hierarchy of the royal family, which is, you know, everything in the royal family. It's all about hierarchy. And was this documentary as explosive as the trailer made it out to be? I wouldn't say so, no. There were segments of it that I think were interesting, but it was, to me, it was very much the reheated kind of revelations from the Oprah Winfrey interview that they'd already gone into. Let's dive into that Oprah interview. So that was explosive when it came out almost two years ago. How has the public perception changed from Harry and Meghan from that Oprah interview until now? Well, it depends who you're asking. There seems to be um, a lot of anger directed, a strange amount of anger directed towards Meghan Markle in the UK from people who like really love and respect the royal family and maybe listen to some of these tabloid stories. So there's been definitely like an unhealthy amount of hatred kicked up after that interview. And, but at the same time, there are a lot of people who have sympathized with Meghan Markle and understand that her experiences must have been very difficult to, to enter that palace as an outsider and experience the racism that she did. Um, so I think it's a mixture, right? Some people have, have grown more fond of them after the interview, and then some people seem to have become obsessively like hateful of her. Let's talk about that specifically about the response to the documentary. Let's take it from the British media. What have they said about it? The documentary, well, obviously they think um, Meghan Markle is dis the big thing I saw was that they were focusing a lot on her kind of making fun of herself for not knowing how to curtsy the queen. That really made them mad. They thought they were like disrespecting uh, these sacred British traditions, which yeah, she wasn't. She was just kind of saying, you know, there are some silly ritualistic things you do when you enter the family. You're not necessarily prepared. Her frame of reference was medieval times. Uh -huh. And, you know, some people found that distasteful, but I think it was just, she was just, shining a light on the kind of absurdity of the situation. And you... And, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Continue. Oh, yeah, and they seem to um, not be happy with um, the the documentary kind of hinting that there was an issue or some kind of feud with William without really going into that. The tabloids, I think, seem quite protective of William, seeing as he's the heir to the throne. Do you think that it should have delved further into the documentary? I know at one point... Harry got a text from William, showed it to Meghan, and there was a response to that, but they didn't show us what the text was. Do you think that was a misstep in the documentary? Yeah, I mean, I personally would have found it great to like delve into the gossip, the juicy gossip. This is, to me and a lot of other people, I think, is what is interesting about the royal family, is, you know, when that shiny, gilded exterior is kind of cracked open and you see all the drama that's inside. That's what people are fascinated by. So we, we want to hear more of it. That's really why we want to listen to Harry and Meghan at all. But they didn't, they didn't give us much on that. Yes, underwhelming for sure, as you wrote. And you also write that Prince Andrew, the brother of King Charles, who was reportedly friends with sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, has not been subjected to nearly the same level of scrutiny and criticism by the British media. Why do you think that is? Yeah, he has not because he, the narrative the British tabloids um, want to communicate is that Meghan Markle has damaged the royal family's reputation. But I don't think that anyone could have damaged the royal family's reputation to the extent that Prince Andrew has. They don't really seem to want to talk about it. They seem to want to sweep it under the rug. It's not convenient. They don't know how to speak about it. But Meghan Markle is this kind of rude outsider who entered and disrespected the whole thing. 
And that for some reason that seems to be easy to channel anger towards that, even though she's not, she didn't do anything. The way they speak about her is the way you would speak about someone who's committed a terrible crime and she hasn't done anything. The British media, as you said, uh, had a negative reaction to the documentary for sure. But what has Americans response been? Well, I think generally it, the documentary, if you could call it that, it's more of a puff piece. I think it was seen as quite self-indulgent. I think people were kind of curious. They were might, maybe disappointed to see that there wasn't as much, um, there wasn't much detail because we already saw, we already heard what they said during the Oprah Winfrey interview and much of the documentary just kind of regurgitated that. And you know, it's, it's over long, it's kind of bloated. The two are they're kind of annoying, they're kind of cringy. You're watching the, the documentaries and you're like, why? <laughs> this isn't what I signed up for. I wanted some juicy gossip. And in your piece for Forbes, you wrote that their comments even come a, came across as, quote, borderline distasteful. Why is that? Yeah, so I was with them for the first few episodes and then they started to kind of complain about living in this little cottage and laughing about how small their cottage was and how Oprah Winfrey <laughs> said that no one would believe, you know, you live in this space. But, you know, I, th I think they were living there rent free. If not, they're living in the grounds of a palace. They had a, a, aside from this horrible relationship, uh, relationship with the media, they've got a pretty good life. They have, they have a good, they have everything they need. And there's a, there's a cost of living crisis in the UK right now where people can't even afford to pay the bills to heat their homes. And, you know, that is not limited to the UK. There's a big cost of living crisis across the world right now. And I just think listening to these rich, wealthy, literal royals complain to the extent they did, you, you kind of start to lose, lose sympathy at a certain point. Do you think the criticism of the documentary has been fair? <laughs> to some degree, I think the British tabloids overreacted a lot, a lot. And there are some British celebrities, for example, Jeremy Clarkson, the former host of Top Gear, he wrote a pretty unhinged article about the documentary where he wrote, he wrote that he hated Meghan on a cellular, le cellular level and dreamed of the day where she is made to parade naked through the streets of every town in Britain while the crowds chant shame and throw lumps of excrement at her. Now, this is some kind of Game of Thrones reference that I think he thought was funny. But it just, it wasn't like, it was a really strange overreaction to this kind of inoffensive, if slightly annoying celebrity. Yeah, overreaction to say the least. But do you think there is Harry and Meghan fatigue? Nah, I think so, yes. I think they've kind of overdone it a bit. Um, if they really do want to step away from, more, from royal life and from the stress of the media, they can. Um, they don't really need to make documentary series where they kind of, go delve into their life. And Megan is a pretty successful podcaster. She's got her podcast archetypes. She's an activist. They have a deal working with Netflix. They can continue to work and not really be as much in the public eye as they were in this documentary. They can kind of take a step back a little bit. Do you think the documentary was bad PR for the couple? Ultimately, I would say so, because I think most reasonable people were on their side and then this kind of made them look quite out of touch, a bit self-absorbed maybe, and kind of like they're clinging to relevance through their connection to the royal family, which they also seem to want to sever. So it's kind of like pick, pick a direction. Got it. Looking forward, Spare does come out in a few weeks in January, and that's Prince Harry's book. Do you expect any new insight from that? Uh, I doubt it. I mean, we didn't get a lot of new insight from the series itself that we didn't from Oprah Winfrey. And I think that moment that you were talking about when they showed, they did not show the text from William, but they spoke about it. I think that's an indication that they won't. There's only so far they're willing to go. I doubt they would want to poke the bear again because, you know, this feud with the royal family can continue to intensify. And they do have the British media pretty much on their side. So I think Harry would be wise to kind of be kind of to restrain himself to a certain degree. Well, we have a lot to look forward to. Danny, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Brittany.